starting with the COVID-19 in the in the framework on which the war has reached Europe in Ukraine, uh, and at the same time we are facing facing the future with the energy crisis and and uh, high inflation and many problems around different countries. On the, that way, the future is unclear. The weather in Helsinki is misty, and the future side is also a little bit misty. But this has been a great opportunity for us to build an even more the resilient public sector. Citizens look forward on public sector. Public sector is the cornerstone in difficult situation for the citizens. And we have been recognizing where our strength lie and uh, where we need to work still on harder. The OECD insights are invaluable for us. Uh, we have in here, Finland, we are going through one of the big, biggest public sector transformation at the moment. The creation of welfare counties, which is completely new level of public governance. And like I said earlier on, this added to these uh, numerous crises which have been faced in recent year, it makes our life a little bit diff difficult. And it means to us that we have worked harder and find the core issues that are most valuable to stay and uh, develop in further. And we have to be more proactive in tackling the issues that arise and challenge our better future. Finland in, in, intends to, to take concrete steps to shift toward uh, proactive governance also in wider scale. And the first necessary steps will be taken in the next government term. We know that, well, we know that, and hopefully you know after my short presentation that we will have the next um, uh, elections on, on spring. And this start our new marathon. It's not a sprint. We are not ready in four years. Hopefully we are ready by the end of 2020s. Uh, thank you also to all, also to European Commission for all the support, support so far. This has been an important process for, for us. And we are looking forward to share the, our experience and developed know-how as we develop our governance system. Collaboration with the international arena is something we are very strongly committed to. Are we these few words and uh, misty future sites? I am happy to, to be with you this, this afternoon and ho hope the very fruitful discussions. And I hope that it will be, can be shared in uh, other countries too. So thank you for giving me this, this opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Director Nathalie Berger of the European Commission to say a few words about the relevance of the anticipatory innovation governance model to EU member states. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, dear, dear Juha and uh, Katju, our colleagues from Finland, dear Janos and uh, colleagues from the OECD, dear colleagues and experts, first of all, I would like to thank Finland and the OECD for the opportunity to address you today in this important and very interesting seminar. Recent events have showed that anticipatory innovation and foresight are essential elements of public administration. Citizens turn to us when change happens and crisis hit, and we need to be prepared and plan accordingly. Today gives me an opportunity to address these challenges with one of the most advanced public administration in the entire European Union. Further, it allows me to express my congratulations 
for the work that has been done together with the Finnish administration uh, and with the technical assistance of the OECD and SDG reform on improving anticipatory innovation governance in Finland. I would like to touch on two topics. First of all, give a quick overview on the role of the European Commission in supporting the work on anticipatory innovation governance. And second, I would like to provide some elements on the future challenges in the European Union and the role of the anticipatory innovation capacity in facing them. As you know it very well in the European Commission Directorate General for Structural Reform Support, we do support the coordination of policy making for the whole institution, for the whole commission, on the core issue and key issue of the quality of public administration. And in this context, we have led a number of major studies and comparisons. We have also exchanged with the member states and experts in the framework of our expert group on public administration. Some of the lessons that we have learned in the past are summarized in our staff working document on supporting public administrations in EU member states to deliver reforms and to prepare for the future. And it is evident that today, while the European administrations face increasingly complex policy issues, public administrations at all levels of the government need to work better. And in a world of uh, super wicked problems, such as climate change and black swan events, such as the COVID-19, coupled with the often complex multi-level governance setup of the EU, and set up against the background of globalization, we have our work cut out for us. Complexity can be managed, however, with the right decision making and cooperative systems in place. The report that is launched today demonstrates comprehensively the important role of anticipation and innovation in facing the complex issues. Through our technical support instruments, we are fully committed and prepared to support the member states in adopting anticipatory innovation governance to the public administrations. Our role with the fruitful collaboration of the member states and partners is to provide financial support and above all, advice, technical support, intellectual advice and added value, we hope. We have inspiring examples of projects focused on building innovation capabilities within the public administrations. For instance, the work led together with the technical expertise of the OECD in Latvia to build an innovation lab. This has been an exciting journey. The work has provided a capacity to disrupt the public administration through analysis and better design of policies. It has also allowed a repositioning of the state chancellery on the identification and the steering of innovation in Latvia. In Ireland, we are trying to draw the lessons from the management of the COVID-19 crisis to increase the capacity of the state to plan for future crises. Similarly, similarly, we are running and launching two high impact multi-country projects on building capacity for evidence-informed policymaking in governance and public administration in a post-pandemic Europe with the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, the OECD, and Greece, Belgium, Czechia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and the Netherlands. <clears throat> we are leading a project on strengthening the resilience of public administration after the COVID-19 crisis with Common Assessment Framework 2020, that is also led to improve the capacity for foresight and innovation of public administration. And this project involves 12 member states, Belgium, Bulgaria, Austria, 
Croatia, Italy, Finland, Spain, Poland, Portugal, Greece, Slovenia, and Slovakia. And we're also partnering with the technical expertise of the OECD on that one. And in addition to this work, our joint research center is also leading ambitious work with its foresight unit to promote such capacity in the European Union. The Finnish example developed with the AIG team and the OECD has provided valuable insight on how a top performance as Finland aims at continuously improving its capacity. It can take, I can take a few key takeaway from our work. First, the need to increase the capacity of civil servants to reflect on future policy challenges. Second, the need to create a long-term planning for our short-term democracies through revised policy making processes, budgetary processes, but also through better dialogue between the politicians and the public administration. The findings of our project in Finland and its potential follow up will eventually serve as a blueprint for other member states, supporting the public administrations to plan and adjust better to evolutions and be better prepared for future crises. And I'm looking forward to the concrete implementation of these recommendations in Finland. Now, let me turn to the upcoming challenges where, that we're all going to face in the European Union where anticipatory innovation capacity will be useful. I can clearly say, say that I can see Finland winning the gold in ice hockey at the next Olympic Games, finally overpassing a very famous neighbor as the true record holder. But I can also see that the anticipatory innovation capacity will be central to the upcoming challenges in the European Union. In our staff, working document on supporting public administrations. We have identified future challenges for future administrations. And clear anticipatory innovation is a must to assess their impact and plan accordingly. I will list five challenges. First, the unprecedented speed of technological challenge and change. The current situation represents a profound challenge, but also a unique opportunity for the administrations. This momentous shift requires adapting administrations, working and decision-making methods, and enabling human centricity in the delivery of public services. It is an opportunity to rethink, redesign, and redeploy themselves. Second, the impact of demographic changes and the increasing skills shortage. New skills are necessary to address the complex demographic and skill shortages challenges and develop solutions that will make the implementation of the reform and recovery package successful. And beyond that, maintain and improve the capacity of administrations. Third, the increasing complexity of managing policy issues. As mentioned, we are living in a world of super wicked problems, such as climate change and black swan events, as a COVID-19. We need to encourage a culture of innovation as a central part of public administrations functioning at all levels of governance, at each and every level of governance. Fourth, the impact and importance of, green, of the green transition. If we want to achieve our European goal of becoming the world's first climate neutral continent, and we want it, our administrations need to ensure leadership, competence, a sound knowledge base, and ensure accountability and transparency in policymaking. And fifth, 
the increasing competition for limited public funding. The key question is one of prioritization, which requires leadership and innovative thinking. Improved financial management is key to addressing issues of intergenerational fairness. And this can be achieved through better understanding of future challenges and opportunities. Again, a culture of innovation is key in public administration. However, be it for the green transition and climate change or fast technological change, we need to be prepared to create more room for strategic thinking and experimentation in the policy making. We need to build capabilities and focus on the continuity of reforms beyond government terms. In this context, the primary challenge of public administrations is building resilience. The work done in the area of public administration and governance has shown that such resilience is born from the combination of two elements, stable and efficient processes and structures in the public administration that deliver quality services and policies for the citizens and companies. But we also need a capacity for disruption that allows to challenge, innovate, adapt, and ultimately improve the public administration. To conclude, I see anticipatory innovation capacity and this structural courage to challenge the status quo and adapt as vital opportunities for our demographic and democratic societies. And I'm looking forward to an insightful webinar today, looking forward to very fruitful exchanges. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you very, very much, Director Berger, for really laying out what's at stake uh, in this work and uh, underlining some of the challenges that we all face uh, in the European Union uh, and beyond. And thank you also, Director Sarkio, for opening Finland uh, to this experience uh, with the OECD and having this ambition uh, to build up anticipatory innovation capacity. Uh, I can see that uh, Director Berger is, is fine with uh, ambitious provocation with that ice hockey comment as well. Uh, and we'd like to, to hear a bit from the participants who are um, in the room today. We have a question that we'd like to, uh, to pose to you. And it's really looking at uh, your level of confidence in your government. Uh, that are you able to anticipate future risks or is your government able to anticipate future risks that uh, Director Berger underlined and uh, create opportunities and innovate accordingly in a timely manner. So there should be a poll, a question that's launched at the moment and we'd like to know your perspective on this, considering the types of challenges and threats uh, and changes that uh, Director Berger mentioned. How confident are you? I see the results are, are coming in. Really, really interesting results. I see nobody so far is very confident, uh, not even Finland, uh, even if they are the, the leaders of this work uh, and they have the gold, they're on the gold podium so far. Looks like 60% of you have responded. Uh, and the, the lead is in somewhat. So not even a, a neutral stance. Uh, so some of you not at all, not at all confident. Um, there's a few that are, are, are confident. I'm very curious to know more about, about those and maybe we'll dig in a bit uh, into why and the reasons behind that. So really interesting. Uh, results here. I'm, I'm not surprised that uh, we don't see anyone very confident. Um, this is really difficult work uh, and it's ambitious that uh, Finland has, has taken this on. And I would thank you again um, to all of the Finnish team who has worked on this uh, project because uh, it's, it's gone well beyond 
um, kind of saying important uh, big uh, words and setting those ambitions, they've really been working on taking it into practice and really operationalizing uh, anticipatory innovation in their government. Uh, and so with that, I would like to hand over to Pirette Tordoris, who has been leading the anticipatory innovation governance work in Finland, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, what has been involved in this project and uh, what are some things that we learned. Over to you, Pirette. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Juha for the introductions. I have difficult task of summing up the report in 10 minutes uh, that you can get excited about reading the work that is on 350 pages that we have done in Finland over the last uh, two years. So at Dissipatory Innovation Governance, uh, we have been working with a very good team, uh, some of whom are online and here as well, in Finland and both at the OECD, to actually develop a model of anticipatory innovation governance. And when here we talk about anticipation and anticipatory innovation, we really mean creating knowledge about the future, but actually making decisions based on that knowledge. So anticipation is not um, de facto only strategic foresight and futures, but it's actually the decision. If it's misty in Finland and in Helsinki today, do we take an umbrella in the anticipation that there will be also rain? And uh, do we also uh, get excited about the future win in hockey uh, if we are so confident uh, in actually making the bet uh, in the future that uh, Finland is going to win the hockey tournament? So anticipation is making the bets and the decisions and innovating towards that. So it's actually about taking action today towards the future outlook that may come up. And for that, we actually need a governance system that supports that, that supports already innovating today towards the future outcomes. And for that, we need agency in governments, actually the, uh, and the ability to use different types of tools and methods, make sense of the future, make sense of different uh, scenarios, explore alternatives, different structures, organizational capabilities that allow us to do the anticipatory work and also translate that into, that into innovation itself. And we also need an authorizing environment that, that is a feedback system that says that this work is actually good, needed, that we have evaluation of current policies in terms of uh, their uh, future readiness, readiness, that we stress test them, that we have legitimacy in actually considering different types of scenarios, and that we also talk to people about what types of futures or opportunities they would actually like to take up on. So the different model elements uh, actually created a very good framework to do the evaluation in Finland, in assessment of the government and different organizations in government in terms of their anticipatory innovation capacity. So we looked at both the agency of Finnish public servants and their authorizing environment, the feedback system that allows uh, Finland to anticipate. And this, of course, is the pleasure to launch the final full report of the PERC itself with the framework to assess anticipatory capacity in governments, in organizations that can be applied elsewhere. We did also a lot of action research and pilots after the initial assessment in the fields of continuous learning, carbon neutrality, child well-being, and also the dialogues of the roles of politician and administrative staff in anticipatory innovation system to actually see how those findings and uh, how to actually get started in anticipatory innovation in practice. And we also did an update about the anticipatory innovation governance model in terms of looking at the functions where additional uh, capacity or anticipatory elements should be uh, included. So we analyzed the system based on anticipatory innovation governance mechanisms and we have to say that we have the pleasure to work with one of the best uh, governments in the world, not only in the EU countries, but one of the advanced uh, democracies and governance systems uh, overall. But there are still a lot of things that could be done to advance the system from also having the impact of strategic foresight and futures into the value chain of making policies and considering different experiments and making it possible for civil servants to actually consider different types of alternatives.
We saw different types of clusters of challenges, both organizational, individual, procedural levels that uh, were hindering anticipation and innovating based on that how from happening in the Finnish government itself. And we looked at seven different thematic issues uh, in terms of the analysis itself in Finland about how to make anticipatory innovation more democratic, how to pass the impact act of uh, futures and foresight, how to integrate uh, uh, anticipatory knowledge into budget and investments, how to explore alternatives, uh, what types of exactly what types of individual and organizational capacities are needed for anticipation itself, and how to cross policy cycles in terms of not dropping uh, important uh, development fields and policies in the midst of elections and beyond elections. And we also discussed the coordination across government, so the eternal issue of silos and how to cross them uh, with new challenges at hand. And each of the pilots, we looked at uh, uh, also these different elements, not only in the theoretical format, but we actually worked on the continuous learning system, for example, to actually see how to structure different participants from different levels of government, different ministries, uh, to uh, start the sense-making processes in terms of what type of uh, kind of learning system Finland needs to promote understanding and relevant use of information, uh, to also look at organizational structures, new types of flexible organizations that needed to be created for that to actually happen in practice. The same time of tests and the considerations we did in the other pilots as well, looking at specific mechanisms of anticipatory innovation governance system and how to do it in practice. And these are, of course, outlined and well described in full report in terms of different approaches, to how to include anticipatory evidence and evaluation, for example, in fiscal planning system, uh, in terms of the carbon neutrality and sustainability goals that are extremely important today to uh, also interacting with uh, between politicians and the roles of government. And that led us uh, to the understanding is that uh, anticipatory innovation government, we don't say redo the whole government itself. We actually say that these anticipatory innovation functions need to be included into existing government functions themselves. We need to have uh, anticipatory innovation possible and made possible in how we plan strategies in government, how we do budgetary decisions, how we also uh, plan legislation and legal acts how our human resource function, skills and capacities are promoted in government. Uh, do you actually get uh, evaluated on how innovative uh, your, your work is? How much time you think about the future opportunities, for example? But we also saw the need to describe new types of government functions in terms of actually making it clear that we need a government transition function. So going from one government to another government so we don't uh, drop uh, kind of complicated and complex policies that are uh, longer than one common term. So also how to ensure that knowledge from one common term is transcended to the next government term. So how to assure that uh, in the government structure itself. And we also, uh, it became clear that the government planning functions in terms of how we look at emerging issues and how they arise needs to become more transparent and clear. So how do we analyze new emerging topics uh, coming up? And how do we assign responsibility for them in different uh, governments? So which ministry or in between ministry across government uh, organizational forms do we need for new types of challenges or challenges that are extremely complex in nature? And do our human resource uh, systems and legislative systems and also uh, fiscal and uh, budgetary systems allow us to actually work in those ways that those challenges require. So we have a lot of action points described for the governments itself, uh, from systemizing the transition process to, to improve continuity of long term reforms, developing methods to plan responses to emerging issues in terms of assigning concrete responsibility and flexibility within the system, how to establish uh, structures for regular collective sense-making, visioning and exploration of alternatives, how to test new approaches to allocate budgetary resources to emerging phenomena, or also how to take future-oriented data into account into a field of uh, fiscal planning that has been very forecasting-oriented. 
that it's difficult to actually make the right investments at the right time, yet there are models to do so. So further, we also uh, had uh, recommendations connected to regulatory approaches to support experimentation, so we can actually take the anticipatory knowledge into experimentation and innovating projects, how to design training teams and roles to actually make anticipation uh, reality in the context of government, how to institutionalize dialogue and deliberation around these topics and build trust between citizens, public officials, and also politicians in those roles that they have to look at on certain topics where also the change might be scary and uh, unforeseen. And uh, one of the last also connecting, but not definitely least, connecting futures and foresight systems, to the policy making system itself. So we're trying to drag different silos from foresight systems, innovation systems to normal policy making out of their corners to actually talk to each other and to ensure that there is a value chain of action coming out of the systems and from those deliberations that are going on. And of course, we want to track and assess the use of anticipatory approaches so we can actually know what works and what does not. And for, with that, I give it over to Katju to tell what they're going to actually do in Finland with all those recommendations and the work that we have done. Happy reading to the audience. I will see you soon in the panel section. Thank you so much, Birit. And uh, I, I first wanted to just say that I'm really, really happy to be here today. Uh, I'm really happy that, uh, of all the material, of, the, of, of all the significant analyses that we have here. But I'm also very happy to see such a huge audience from so many member so, so, from so many different countries uh, interested in the in this issue and in this work because I, I am a big believer in cooperation and I really think that this is uh, with the 350 pages that Pirat uh, uh, mentioned with the super wicked uh, problems uh, that we are talking here that that Natalie Berger took up I think we need each other's support and 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 this is really uh, I feel this as a support for the work we are doing, and I really feel this is a joint work. And therefore, I also want to thank, of course, first the Pirates team, OECD, Janos, and, and all of the people in the OECD who have been involved. And of course, uh, also very much uh, thanking the EU Commission for all the, all the support. And really, like I said, we have here a huge significant analysis, uh, basis and guidelines for our further development. And we have used this, uh, maybe I can call it a flower picture. Uh, it actually has uh, its links to the thematic issues that, that Pirat took up. We've used this flower picture to describe kind of the whole, uh, the, the big picture that this uh, anticipatory innovation governance work forms in Finland. We wanted to put it in one relatively simple picture. But this is the picture and these are the issues that we are now taking forward and, and, and implementing. Uh, already to some extent, but uh, in, in, a, in a growing speed and growing uh, work. But I'm quoting also my DG Juha Sarkio saying that this really is a marathon, so no, no quick wins here, but a lot of work, but a lot of uh, very important work. And the role of the Ministry of Finance, where I come from, and the AIG team, uh, Ira, Paulina, Matti, who've been involved, our, or, or are involved in this. So our role is to ensure and coordinate that all of these areas, uh, all of these different aspects and all of these six areas that are in the picture, that we take this forward in, in, in cooperation with others. And, and, as, and not just in, in, kind of in, a, in a fragmented way, but keeping also in mind all, all the time, this whole picture and all of the different uh, people and, and um, authorities, uh, different stakeholders that are involved. Many of these areas that you saw in the in this so in this picture and heard Peter to talk about, uh, we we can already um, advance them and take them forward in our existing working areas, and we are already doing that. I take I give you one example, um, which is the involving citizens in this picture, citizen participation. We are doing that already, uh, the issues that are in, in, in the report and in, in this work as part of our open government work. And for instance, we've built this Finnish national dialogue models that we are now testing uh, 
uh, and and uh, will be kind of um, in full function beginning of next year. It is. It, I mention it because I want to tell you that we are already on our way of implementing. It's only one tool. It's only one thing. So it doesn't solve everything, not in the whole picture, not in the involving citizens area, but it gives you the idea that uh, we really mean business here. So we really want to uh, uh, um, implement these, but really all the time also taking uh, into account the whole picture. Well, what, what are we then doing to implement and how can we get into more concrete actions in Finland? The pilots that Piret mentioned, uh, the continuous learning, uh, child welfare, carbon neutrality in financial and economic policy planning and the dialogues between politicians and, uh, and, and the high level civil servants. They have really already been one way to get uh, um, in front those issues and those such to put in practice those suggestions that OECD has given us in, in the anticipatory innovation governance and showing us what is what more is needed if we want to fully implement and develop our anticipatory innovation governance in Finland. And, and well, what have we done and what are the next steps? Uh, as I said, this work links to a numerous existing working areas and to these existing functions that Piret showed to you. So there is a there is already, um, and when we are planning ahead and, and paving the way to implementation, we have been organizing joint meetings with all of the key partners and stakeholders. And this work continues all the time. There's a huge amount of, of different uh, stakeholders, different uh, uh, partners uh, for us in this work. And this is very important to go through all the things that are in the report together with these partners. At the same time, we have worked on our plans on how to uh, launch implementation work on a larger scale uh, next year, and hopefully with support from the EU through the TSI function and, and together with the OECD. And this will really be one of our most uh, one of our important working areas and projects in public governance uh, in the in the coming next uh, coming years. And there, uh, Piret also took up. Uh, and Juhan Sarkio mentioned that we will have the government, uh, we will have the elections and the changing government. And therefore, this, at the same time as we are, we are doing work in some areas and implementing already, we're planning for a bigger project to start next year or a bigger kind of ho more holistic project, more whole of government project to start next year. We are also, uh, there are things to be done uh, at this point uh, and things we hope we can advance already before as this government transition function and transition processes is something that we will have next spring. And some of the issues that we have taken up to, to especially pay attention at the moment is the thing that OECD proposes us is to ensure the continuity of long-term reforms and avoid the loss of know-how and insights in this process when we will have the actual transition uh, process next year. Also a very important thing to take forward uh, at the moment is the establishing the standing committee or a group to discuss anticipatory issues and link them to our core processes to ensure that we do a lot of foresight and futures work, but we really need to quickly integrate them better into our core processes. And they're, they're, they're also to create these clear and structured future seeking moments. These are some of the issues that are very kind of concrete things uh, linked to the government transition process. But like Piret said, there are 350 pages, there are hundreds of proposals for Finland. And I just wanted to ensure that we are working on many of them in, in, in these areas that you see in this picture already. We are, we are working together with our partners to in, enhance uh, this, this kind of uh, continuous working in the working areas, but we are also pr pr preparing for a, for a more uh, concrete implementation project next year, at the same time taking care that uh, we don't miss, for instance, the government transition process uh, possibility next year. So I just wanted to end by thanking again uh, the OECD, uh, the EU, uh, all you people who have been involved. And, and uh, we are so happy, but we also know that uh, in this world of super, super wicked problems, this is a we are eager to go ahead, but it's a really challenging uh, path. And therefore, the, the mental support that we get, for instance, from this webinar, from you participants, is really, really, really uh, heartwarming. So thank you so much for that. Thanks.
Thank you very much, Tachu uh, and Perret, for going over the, the, the work to date. Really interesting discussions as well in, in the chat. I welcome you to continue those discussions and share resources uh, on the government transitions and, and many other things that are being discussed. And feel free to use the Q&A as well. For now, I have another poll question related to the points that uh, Tachu raised. Um, and that is really about taking anticipatory innovation into practice. So my next poll question for you, which should appear any moment, uh, is does your government have a clear and transparent way to plan responses? So organize human organizational budgetary systems uh, to address emerging issues. So it's a scale of strongly disagree to strongly agree. How is your government doing in the types of processes and practices that uh, Katu mentioned? Ooh, lots of disagreement. Okay, so there's still work to do. And no one is taking a strong stand again, uh, that they strongly agree, probably because we know that they're, they're going to find you and ask you exactly how you did it. Um, and the point here is that nobody has figured out how to do this exactly uh, perfectly, I think. A few more coming in, but it looks like um, a consensus building around either neutral or some level of disagreement, uh, disagree or strongly disagree. So we still have work to do. Um, Finland is ambitious in trying to create some examples of pathways to do that. Uh, and uh, we have learned uh, quite a lot from their experience that I'm sure that uh, others in the disagree column uh, will maybe be able to learn from as well. Okay. Well, I'd now like to hand it over uh, back to Pirette, who's going to be moderating a panel on exactly that question. So the relevance of the anticipatory innovation governance model uh, in other countries. So what's, uh, what is uh, next? What can we learn from Finland? Uh, and uh, what could this look like in other countries? Over to you, Pirat. Uh, thank you so much, Angela, and thank you so much, Katju. Please to also share questions of Finland in the Q&A. We may get to back to that uh, later on in the, in the webinar, but now we actually want to talk about uh, is this actually possible in any other country outside of uh, Finland? So can we actually do anticipatory innovation governance also in other contexts? So I'm welcoming uh, our esteemed panelist, uh, Kirsten Carson Hawks uh, from the Norwegian Digitalization Agency, who has been doing fantastic work uh, on uh, getting strategic foresight and futures into actual uh, services. Uh, integrated within the Norwegian public sector, uh, Francisco Fordado, who is the coordinator of the foresight and planning team at the Competence Center Planning Plan Up in Portugal, and Eric Mink, who is the head of the Innovation in Mobility Department, Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management in the Netherlands. So they all have uh, very good perspectives on uh, all of these topics in terms of actually doing strategic foresight, but actually applying that in practice as well. And I would like to lead uh, with the first question, uh, maybe uh, starting from the fact that uh, how would the uh, anticipatory innovation governance model fit into your country context? So I'm also welcome to say that it doesn't, but uh, maybe we can start uh, off by Eric. Uh, how would it fit in the in the Netherlands context? I think it could fit pretty well in the Dutch context. Um, I think we are an open country such as uh, as Finland is. We are very used to to have broad policy discussions with different stakeholders. Um, so it could fit, um, but we are not yet uh, doing it in a structured way, such as your AIT model. Um, so I am still puzzling on how we could implement this. Um, we are trying similar uh, approaches on smaller projects, um, but the projects that uh, Finland has chosen are 
quite ambitious, I have to say. Thank you so much. Christine, over to you. Uh, how far is Norway from, from Finland? Oh, we are, we are not as advanced as Finland, as, of course, but there are similarities between the Norwegian society and the Norwegian government and the Finnish society and the Finnish government. And Finland has proven an ideal testbed for building and testing a working model for anticipatory innovation governance system. And we see uh, a possibility of, of really strengthen the Nordic model further by exploring and applying the anticipatory innovation. And we also have a couple of initiatives that we continue to develop in municipality, in regional and governmental level. And we aim to challenge the silos and creating new ways of collaboration, collaborating when working with big problems and complex problems that need systemic uh, uh, approaches. We both have one example from the Norwegian Association of Local and Regional Authorities that organize partnership for radical innovation. And we also have an example from seamless services and life events that um, won't have a name to develop uh, better uh, services for citizens and businesses. Thank you so much. And Francisco, uh, how would the anticipatory innovation governance model fit into the Portuguese public service? Uh, first of all, thank you, Peter, for the invitation, and thank you, Opsi and the OECD, for an invitation to be here and provide the perspective from from Portugal, which is, if you look at the map of Europe, Finland, Finland is in one hand, Portugal is one of the ends of Europe, and Portugal is in the opposite end, I guess. So there are countries that are, are very different, but also have some similarities that. Uh, uh, regarding their position to the center in Europe. Um, and I say this because um, as different as the countries can be, the challenges that we face, and that was this, were described here by, by several of the previous uh, guests, are similar. Uh, we live in a world of great uncertainty, uh, mounting challenges, and we're anticipating uh, these challenges with limited resources, I think any of us can agree that this is, um, these are, sh are, shared, uh, are shared issues that we face. And to, to that extent, some of the solutions will have obviously to be, to be similar. Um, as a testimony to this in Portugal, I will just maybe take a brief word uh, talking about the new institution that I'm uh, working for in the at the core, at the center of government of the Portuguese government, uh, which is Planat that you mentioned. Uh, this is a very new entity. And in part, it's, it's part of this process that appears in Finland, but throughout, throughout Europe, I would say, of putting foresight and anticipatory innovation governments more to the forefront of priorities, or at least recognizing that this is important. And so Planat is this new center of competencies. This is a new type of model inside the Portuguese administration. There's other centers of competency that were also created, for instance, in the legal field and for legal support to the government. Uh, Planat itself is connected to planning, foresight, monetization of public policy, policy evaluation, too. Um, and it's also associated with the network uh, which is called Replan, uh, which will have the first meeting in a couple of weeks, although we have already some, I would say, preliminary in certain fields meetings. But this Replan aims exactly to one of the things that was mentioned here, to cut the silos and to cut across the silos and provide the more holistic response and in terms of policy design, policy monetization, response to future to 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 the future to the future challenges and also opportunities, and which groups all the ministries of the Portuguese administration. Of course, it's focused on planning and and foresight, um, but which has and I'll finish with this. Um, 
which has also another big ambition, and it's something we've been working with the OECD in Plan APP, especially dedicated to foresight, which is this question that was raised also by the previous speakers of how can strategic foresight actually shape and uh, impact public policy. Uh, and since in our institution, we combine both planning and responsibility for certain strategic documents with the responsibility of foresight and are at the core or at, are, have a pivotal role in this new network of the Portuguese public administration, we hope, of course, there's no magic wand for this, but this is something we take very seriously and are taking steps to, to, to make it come true. Thank you so much, Francesco. I, I think uh, it would be very interesting because uh, Eric and Christine have both keyed in terms of uh, ongoing anticipatory activities that are going in their countries. Uh, Eric, could you tell us what type of projects uh, are you doing uh, that have this kind of anticipatory flavor and what is the work about? Uh, well, I, I work for the uh... Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management, and I'm heading the unit for mobility. Um, and we are working on uh, numerous uh, issues such as art artificial intelligence, uh, welfare economics, um, sorry, well being uh, e economics, um, hyperloops, um, flying cars. Um, but especially uh, uh, data science and digitalization. Um, and, and what we see on these issues is how difficult it is to actually um, make policies from uh, innovations. Um, Research institutes are very good in seeing what innovations are coming. Innovation units such as uh, my unit are very capable in um, bringing innovations further. Um, but then um, the matter of uh, bringing innovations to policy um, is difficult. Um, most public servants are very, very risk averse. Um, and you have to create room for a culture change when it comes to innovation. Um, and I think breaking that cycle and uh, allowing people um, to, to make room for innovation and to break down what is not sustainable is quite a difficult uh, issue that we have to tackle. And what I hope to, what we hope to change, uh, maybe uh, thanks to your report. Um, but but even on on simple issues, it can be quite hard to uh, uh, to make an uh, public organization change their philosophy. I do like a challenge in terms of changing uh, public organizations' philosophies. It's a very fine way of putting it, and I know that Kristen actually has. Uh, ways or practical ways of doing that in Norway. So you have used very interesting tools and methods to gear public servants and also the public sector to innovate in an anticipatory well way. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, thank you, Gret. Uh, anticipatory activities are done in ministries, agencies, and in local government. And I don't have the full view here, but it seems to be an increasing number and used in very different ways. And we see that uh, scenario planning, horizon scanning, and other foresight methods are used to make robust policies and strategies and to enhance innovation and make future 
fit public services. And I will highlight three or four examples here. On behalf of the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development, Norwegian Defence Research Establishment has carried out an assignment on unwanted information influence on elections. The second uh, report, published now in October, presents five scenarios that illustrate and exemplify how influence in connection with elections can conceivably occur in the Norwegian context. The assignment is a part of the Ministry's work to strengthen resilience against unwanted influence in elections, and the purpose is to ensure that we prepare to deal with various incidents that may occur. So that's quite fresh and quite new. Another example is the White Paper on Innovation in Public Sector, that was published in 2019, that developed public, uh, public sector scenarios for 2040 to make the innovation policies future fit. And in the White Paper, Foresight is highlighted as one method and competence the public sector must adapt to a greater extent to promote innovation. And I have followed this report uh, the last years and I see it is extremely useful for, for municipalities and agencies to as a starting point for their strategy process and also development processes. And um, uh, the last example is about is, uh, that public sector need to develop solutions that meet users needs several years into the future in order to continue to have services that are relevant and attractive. And two uh, life events in our seamless services program as a part of our digitalization strategy have used first foresight methods to ensure that the seamless services, the new services, not only solves today's problems, but meet, use, meet the future users' uh, needs. The life event new in Norway, which is very, uh, is very important these days with the Korean War, um, they have identified strategic blind zones and developed future personas uh, in the life event work. And the life event starting and running a voluntary organization, also very important in our society, has used scenario planning and a missions approach in their work. So that was three examples that may be interesting. Thank you so much, Kristen. And Francisco, what is uh, kind of the future uh, plans, a plan up to work on anticipation? What is your winning the hockey goal that you have a plan up in terms of using these methodologies or where do you want to go with the kind of the anticipatory readiness of Portugal? Okay, first, I think there's a couple of projects I should mention. Uh, regarding anticipatory innovation uh, in the Portuguese government. Uh, and one of them, it doesn't involve Plan APP directly, uh, but it did involve OPSI in cooperation with the Agency for Modernization of the Public Administration, which actually developed an anticipatory innovation starter kit uh, for LabShish, which is a network of innovative of innovative entities in the Portuguese public administration so there is this the, there's this work at the modernization agency that develops this work of innovation inside the administration itself uh, I've mentioned also the centers of competency not just plan app but in other fields too uh, and I should mention also here, on, a, on another level, uh, that it was during the Portuguese presidency of the Council of Europe, uh, of Europe in 2021 that the initiative of the Ministries of the Future was launched and the network of foresight of the European Union was launched. So I would say, obviously, there's not such a structured approach as we could see in, in Finland, but not just in Plan APP, but I would say across the, the Portuguese, at least the, the Portuguese government, there is a, a very strong awareness of the relevance of these topics and some initiatives uh, have been going on. And I should mention, even in the line ministries, 
in the different sectors. Uh, and here we have a representative, for instance, from the Infrastructure Ministry from, from the Netherlands. But in the ministries like agriculture, infrastructure, economy, uh, the finance ministry in Portugal, all of them have, uh, have uh, entities that are, uh, that are in charge of uh, st strategic thinking and also innovation, anticipation of the future. Of course, uh, one of the things that your report mentioned is the danger of short-termism. And when you couple that with limited resources, uh, there's not always the, the, the availability to fully deploy, you know, these capacities that exist. Uh, but in part, that's one of the roles of PlanUp. And you were talking what PlanUp thinks about the future. I think one critical role of PlanUp is to unlock across the, the, the Portuguese public administration all these capacities that exist to uh, combine them to be a vehicle to, or and a platform to share the information that exists, share the capacity that, that exists, um, and open avenues where this uh, where this anticipatory uh, work can happen, um, not just by PlanUp itself, uh, with projects uh, led by PlanUp, but uh, across the entire administration. And when, and with one of the points that was mentioned also before, which is the capacity build, which uh, in Portugal, it's very critical, the public in administration in Portugal lost actually some capacity on the last decade. Although I don't think this is a problem just of Portugal. I think there was a trend to subcontract services that were done by the public administration to others. But now there's this work and we are part of it of uh, regaining competencies, skills and promoting this, disseminating these comp competencies across the public administration. I think this is a very critical work that we have ahead of us. We already started. And I must add just, just to finish this, this question, another point which touches the issue of public citizens' participation. Um, and one of the things that we are doing, this is doing being done inside Plan APP, is a project called the 2050 Lab, which is a very participatory visioning project to imagine what Portugal could be or would be, or better, what people wish Portugal to be in 2050. And this is gonna, it's a project that involves, uh, which has a deep connection with the, not so much inside the public administration, but it's more a project with civil society, with citizens, to have a mosaic of visions of what Portugal should be. Not should be, what they wish Portugal could be in 2050. Thank you so much. I think you also uh, referenced a very interesting uh, area, but we have been having a party for Finland in terms of their undertaking a very kind of challenging field. And uh, all the panelists have also have seen the report uh, beforehand. And I wanted to ask maybe from Kristen, what has been the most interesting learning from you from Finland? Uh, what are you a little bit jealous of maybe that the Finns have done or you would like to integrate in Norway? Oh, there are 300 pages of very interesting learning. So uh, I should need to go more into details if I should have a very good answer on that question. But one interesting learning from Finland is the activity connecting futures and fortified system to policy making in a systematic order. Because the, in the systematic order, that's, that's a key word here, because there are good projects, there are good initiatives, but they're usually one off and more based on initiatives uh, and not a structured way of working. And another takeaway is that even the advanced foresight experience government of Finland, they still have something to do going forward, even though they already have done much more than any other government. And I, I think the action points identified in the, in the report, and then there are many of them, 
may be relevant to the Norwegian government and also to Norwegian organizations that want to improve their ability to anticipate. So that was just two points for me, but I'm sure there are so many more if you go into detail and learn from the experiences. Definitely. And maybe to Eric, another uh, question that uh, Francisco, in terms of the short-term issue of poli policies, was mentioning, does the Netherlands have a kind of a way to keep issues uh, on the agenda for the long term uh, across different policy cycles? Because we have seen this as a key issue in terms of starting to look forward and envisioning and also applying that. But many changes and transformations in the era of wicked problems take time. So yes. how does the, Neda, the Dutch government actually keep long-term issues on the government agenda? Well, this was probably one of the most difficult questions that, that you were to pose to me today, I hope. Um, and thinking about it, um, it is it is quite it is an easy answer to give when, when it comes to infrastructure policies. Um, um, social welfare etc because then we have these um, uh, long-term funding uh, which is across governments uh, for decades so we have an infrastructure fund um, um, so we can build infrastructure projects for 10 20 years uh, ahead already um, but when it comes to uh, new uh, to new policies or um, let's say uh, sustainability issues and then we did, and we recently started uh, with funds like this so when it, when the money is available, a topic remains on the agenda uh, for the time of the funding. So funding might be key uh, um, for urgent projects. However, um, if something is still in its innovation uh, phase, then funding is difficult. So I hope this answers your question, um, but it, I'm, I'm still puzzling on how to, how to keep um, uh, new developments on an agenda uh, uh, because funding is so crucial to keep things on the agenda. So I'm not going to pretend that the OECD has solved this issue, but at least in the report, we have a long case on using anticipatory uh, data and from different types of modeling also in a very formal mm -hmm. way for these types of investment decisions. So uh, maybe directing people to also read the long report here. Uh, I'm going to actually change things up and I also invite Katya to the panel because we have gotten quite a lot of questions from uh, uh, from the audience to Finland in terms of what they are doing. So I'm welcoming Katja to the panel and asking the rest of the panelists while Katja is coming back to the panel, uh, where would you get started in developing an anticipatory innovation governance model in, for example, uh, Kirsten in Norway? Where is your starting point? <laughs> yes, uh, I will start from, from our own perspective uh, in the digitalization agency where we work. We have started small and have an iterative approach to the development of the model. We are creating the model for anticipation and foresight in the public sector by sharing cases and good examples. And we also inspire to develop capabilities for the use of anticipatory tools and methods. So we have launched a foresight web page, which is very often, as which many people, many agencies, many municipalities visiting. And, there, and people are approaching us also to get started. Uh, and we give advice as far as we can to how uh, uh, going forward. But the next step could be to develop future literacy and connected skills in targeted program for leaders in public sector. And another thing perhaps is also to learn 
to bring out lessons from learn from international cases and especially Finland, of course, into the Norwegian context. And then again, as we don't have this structural approach as Finland has, maybe we should have kind of correlation or the willing so that uh, uh, we have a, bit, a, a kind of more network of interested parties that can inspire each other. Very interesting. Francisco, uh, how would you get started or how are you actually getting started on this? Okay. Uh, I think I, I think already went through a couple of uh, initiatives previous and that are ongoing both in Plan IPP and the public Portuguese administration to get this uh, to get this work starting. Uh, one of the things, and going back to a previous question you, you made, one of the things that I think it's more relevant for us from the from the Finnish example, and we have had uh, one of the things we've done. We've had some bilateral meetings with our Finnish colleagues. We're having a workshop in Lisbon next week where some of the Finnish colleagues will also be present with us. So. It's of course an experience we are looking closely, and I think learning with the ones that are at the forefront is always important. At least uh, knowing their experience, but I would say that extremely two extremely important things that that we've been learning and which are our goals is to create a culture inside the public administration, and we've been discussing this. Create that public administration not always is the best means to create this culture of innovation, but creating a culture that promotes and integrates foresight and innovation into their practice. So not only having uh, this, I don't know about the, so much the, the legal structure of the other countries, but in Portugal, it's very, I would say there's a certain preeminence of of the legal framework is very important and compliance to certain rules. And of course, this is important, but to create the practice, a community inside the, the public administration and a culture uh, that, uh, that allows for foresight to have actually impact on policy and allows for this innovative, uh, innovative thinking and then practice to take place, it's extremely important. But as it was mentioned, this doesn't start in one day and the road to Finland is, is, is going. Finland didn't start this. The last two years, it was at least a work of decades, let's put it that way. And again, like I said, Portugal doesn't start from zero, but there's been some, some uh, Going back and forward, for instance, there was a department for planning and foresight that was merged, merged, distinguished, slash extinguished in the late to the first decade of the, around the first decade of this century. So there's been some false start also. And I think the most critical aspect is indeed to create this culture, this practice, the continuous improvement which is amazing to see when we talk with our Finnish colleagues that they are always wanting, even though everybody says they are in the forefront, they always want to learn more. They always have this humble approach. I think this is very important also if we want to implement these things across the public administration to have this, uh, to have, to have this attitude. And like the colleague said, Christian, to have also a systematic approach. <laughs> Which, uh, but which is something actually we are, it's a very concrete work we are doing in Plan APP, especially regarding, regarding the planning instrument in Portugal, is to set up a systematic framework for how this is done and how all these instruments fit with one another. Very uh, interesting work indeed, and we are looking forward to seeing how it evolves uh, in the upcoming years. I'm going to jump uh, in between now to collect you as well with some interesting questions. So if anybody has solutions from the panel for these questions, then do help cut you out. 
uh, one of our very active chapters going on in the background uh, that our team is engaging with. And one of the questions uh, is, are there specific jobs, laws or degrees that oblige the application of anticipatory practices in Finland? Uh, how do you actually create the sustained legitimacy or demand for this work? Um, that's a tough question. Um, if I think of what it, where the demand for this work comes, uh, I don't think it comes from laws or or I think it comes from um, it comes from, I, I go back to a couple of things that were mentioned earlier here. One was that uh, is, is about money and resources. Uh, and the fact that the way that we have been working previously, we don't have the resources for that anymore. We need to be more proactive. Being reactive takes too much resources. So I think that's one of the demands. The other demand is I, I would I like to connect to what Francisco was saying is about the communities. And I, I was thinking while you were speaking that what are were the issues that actually it's true that we've been working for a long time with some of these issues, but I think one of the especially good points. Um, of starting this particular work this two year work with the OECD was bringing these different communities together. This is an issue that is not just for innovation people it's not just for those people who deal with the core processes and, and developing steering systems. Uh, and it's also for the people working with open government. It's those working with the civil servants and capabilities. And bringing these communities together, I think that's the strength. And this work has brought these communities together. We've talked about these issues in the innovation community, in the steering systems community, but this particular work brought these communities together. And I think that's a core strength. That has been a core strength in this work. That, that, that's also where the demand has, there's, there's been fragmented demand, but now there's been kind of an, an aha element, okay, we are we are actually wanting same things in these communities, and that's a very big strength. Yeah. And uh, another question that is definitely at the heart of Katya's work, uh, as well as that, what is the role of citizens uh, in the anticipatory approach? Uh, what uh, role do citizens play in this kind of creating demand for new approaches? Yeah, I think this is this is also this was also linked to I saw one question about resilience. I'm linking this to the resilience question as well, uh, because I think this is something that. Um, well, first of all, I want to say this, that we are we are jealous of so many things in, in Norway, Netherlands and Portugal. So but one of the things we think we are relatively good at in Finland and so are you uh, in your countries, but is citizen participation. But we, our citizens are not uh, that much involved in, in when we talk about future issues, those issues that are just arising, those are kind of anticipatory issues. And this is, this is something that um, in this work is the core thing that we get, uh, that we do this together. We, we are not doing this anticipatory innovation governance just to make our government, just to kind of, so that I can come to the work and say, okay, nice that our, um, government is not as siloed as it used to be. We are doing this for the citizens. And that's why it's very important that they are involved in this and that there's an opportunity for them throughout the policy cycle to discuss not just the issues at hand, uh, but also those kind of future anticipatory issues and that we get the knowledge from the citizens. And I think the citizens, we know this from the open government uh, work that uh, while we're doing all the, while we're doing a lot of work, we think all the time, the citizens' demands are, uh, are a kind of, the horizon is we were never reaching the actual, uh, when we can never say we're ready, we can never tick the box, but we all the time know that the citizens' demands are growing. And this is something that uh, we see now that th this is one of the areas that we really need to be more proactive and less reactive. That, that's the thing that also builds trust and that's the thing that builds resilience, not just in the government, but also in the society. But when we started with the question of confidence, so that our, our citizens could be confident and trust that we are not just reacting when the crisis hits our head, but that we are proactively trying to make the future better for them. That's the core issue for me. And also OECD's research uh, on trust has recently shown that the 
uh, trust that the citizens have uh, in terms of the ability to innovate in government is very much linked to the trust in government in general. So to kind of the ability to innovate is directly linked to actually the trust in government itself. Connected to that, maybe the final question to the panel, to all panelists is, how do you equip your civil servants or public servants with the tools and methods to actually innovate and experiment in a future-oriented way? Uh, maybe I'll start just two sentences, if you can keep it brief uh, with you, Eric, and then I'll go to the other panelists. Uh well, my, my team has a toolbox for all, all our colleagues uh, in order to innovate. Um, and that's that's how we try to do it. But uh, yeah, I'll stick to that. Uh, Christian, how does the Norwegian government equip their civil servants or plan to equip their civil servants in this area? Yes, that's a tough question too, but... Um... It's, it's, it's a growing interest in anticipation and uh, also the anticipatory methods. So perhaps to, um, to make it more available and make uh, municipalities, agencies, and also ministries try to use it, experiment in new ways of using it, both in service de development, for instance, and in also in different corporations and collaboration activities. Where we need to, where we need to um, uh, do things together, and not only have the, the 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 perspective that the agency, for instance, have. You need to see it from different angles, and force activities could be a, a good way of or make the collaboration better and have a future and the collaboration instead of just solving the problems of today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Francisco. Do you have capacity building and uh, tool and method approaches for civil servants? That's one of, of the toolkits Oxy developed together with the LAPSHIS of the Portuguese Modernization Agency. was exactly a toolkit for a starter to, toolkit for anticipa anticipatory innovation governance. But beyond that toolkit, I would stress here the capacity building for innovation, for foresight, also planning, I think all around capacity building and reinforcing the skills and the capacity of the institutions itself in Portugal is of critical importance, point one. Point two, building the community and the network that allows sharing information and working together across cross-cutting topics. So these two, besides the toolkits, these concrete toolkits, these two overall, I think, uh, directions should do, are critical. Thank you all, and thank you also, Katja. I know there are a lot of things going to come up, so I, I will keep my eye on both on Finland in terms of developing the uh, model further in Portugal, the Netherlands and Norway, because they're bringing us very interesting examples about how uh, these approaches can be applied in practice. But for now, the time is running up and we need to actually go and do the future. Uh, so I'm going to give it over to the Vice Director of the Directorate of Governance. Thank you to the panel uh, for Janos Pertok to, for the final words of the webinar. Over to you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Pierre. And thank you so much for moderating this very interesting uh, discussion. And, uh, and <clears throat> I'm a really great uh, pleasure to join this launching uh, of the report on anticipated innovation governance in the public sector in Finland. Uh, from the beginning, uh, uh, I was very closely listening. And this is really a great uh, honor to join uh, uh, both the representatives of Finland and the Commission and uh, working together, developing this uh, model. And uh, for the reason, I gave uh, special thanks to you, Sarkio, and also Natalie Berger for the inspiring uh, remarks and all the leadership and support. And thank you so much, Katju, and your team for taking the work on anticipated innovation in Finland further. Uh, we are very uh, grateful for the peers. Uh, so thank you so much uh, from uh, 
Norway, the Netherlands, and Portugal for sharing your experience and also how you use this work in your government. Uh, you emphasize many times that uh, the stakes are high, and this is really the time. Uh, the recent uh, developments, whether this is Rus Russia's aggression against Ukraine or the current energy crisis or the cell health situation, which is still evolving. So they provide many reasons to revisit anticipatory capacities and allowing countries to be future ready and more resilient. And we expect that these may happen in the future. So governments around the world are increasingly also expected to upgrade their capacity to anticipate the future and act together to respond to global challenges through continuously identifying, testing, and implementing innovative solutions. So we are very grateful for Finland uh, for working uh, uh, in the past two years and uh, providing the results uh, in this report uh, on how to define a new model of the governance that integrates future thinking the foresight and innovation as a core operating system. And this is what I'd like to pick up as two takeaways. Uh, uh, many of you refer to it, but uh, I'd like to really first emphasize that anticipation is not an extra layer. This is really built up as a, as really as part, as an essential driver for public sector effectiveness. I'm just uh, uh, referring to cut you a uh, couple of minutes uh, uh, on the line. This is not a question of resources or Francesco to emphasize that how anticipatory innovation is part of the culture. But this is part, or, part of the culture of the modern public sector. The second uh, takeaway uh, I'd like to uh, emphasize this is uh, how anticipation helps to ensure that governments, they don't remain static. So when they fray, when they really uh, face the various uh, changing circumstances, how they can explore possibilities, experiment, and continuously learn as part of a broader governance system. So thank you so much for providing many examples. How do you, how do, you do this? Uh, there were many references to trust. And you know that uh, the forthcoming minister meeting in two weeks in Luxembourg, this is focusing on trust in government, trust in public institutions, and also reinforcing democracy. So I'd like to pick up uh, the, the, the line uh, uh, you mentioned, uh, Pire, and uh, you referred to this uh, result that less than 40% uh, of the citizens they trust. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the, the for, for less than 40% of citizens they actually trust in government and also Less than 40% of citizens, they are uh, uh, in favor of uh, 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 government and they believe that their government is innovative. We are analyzing and also uh, uh, using uh, data analytics of the uh, open ended responses to better understand how and whether there's a correlation between this 40 and less than 40% and how uh, this can be used in order to link confidence and investment in the levers for public trust uh, and innovation. So we are analyzing this data. And of course, we would like to fully understand and report back about the potential benefits of innovation for building resilience and also uh, securing and fostering trust in public uh, institutions. I'd like to also thank the Finnish government uh, for delivering this blueprint. And uh, this is a fine example of how uh, you, cut you, you are showing an understanding commitment to constantly adjust the functioning of government and at the same time rethinking the governance structure and what is needed to support. I'd like to really uh, emphasize that uh, you are pioneering this work and uh, we are looking forward to using all this experience to sharing with others. Uh, there's a, a queue and uh, upcoming projects, uh, for example, the ongoing with Ireland and the European Commission. Uh, we are using uh, this uh, competency framework and curricula for senior leaders 
the policymakers and strategy foresight, and also all these um, experiences uh, based on uh, the capabilities. Uh, this we further explored in uh, Italy, Lithuania, and Malta. We are also seeking to connect anticipation to risk management across public and private ecosystems in Sweden, and also uh, linking anticipation to recovery and resilience plans, for example, in Flanders and Belgium. So this will be shaping a series of work uh, across Europe. And uh, for this reason, I'd like to really uh, stress that these anticipatory innovation approaches are not nice to have. This is critical to institutionalize the integ and integrate the governments and how they work and deliver in the future. And for that reason, uh, I'd like to conclude with the word of appreciations uh, to Finland and your commitment to continuously improve the governance system and uh, also using this anticipated innovation as, uh, as a pioneer. And this allows other countries to learn from this experience. Uh, I'd like to thank you all, the peers and all more than 200 participants joined uh, this webinar, webinar. So I'd like to thank all of you for advancing this debate. Uh, and naturally, we look forward to reporting to you on how this work is progressing in the OECD. So thank you so much. And um, I'm uh, grateful for all of your participation. Thank you so much.